is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. This is the Sports Hit List by the fans and for the fans live exclusively on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. I'd like to thank all the fans for tuning in and spending their afternoon with us. I'd like to say pull up, pull up into the comments. Thank you, everyone, for watching our show. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe, whether you like, whether you hate. But we are here today to this afternoon to talk some sports. Uh, coming up later on in the show, we have the MVP debate. Is the regular season MVP debate award overrated? between uh, Coach Walmack and Brandon Falco, the rookie. We also have Tom Brady versus LeBron James, who has been more dominant in their sport. Uh, a, a tag team uh, main event, we have Ray Jarvis and Greg Polias versus Mike Miller and Coach Walmack. But today we're kicking off with the re- Week 6 recap. We have Mr. Box Office himself, Travis McKay, is in the building. Travis, how you doing, sir? I'm good, man. You know, made it through Week 6. Here we go. Ready to talk some football. I mean, them Cowboys is out there looking like trash. But what else is new? Uh, we also have Declan's in the building. Declan, how you doing, man? Pretty good. Thanks for having me, Carl. Have, have you guys seen oh, Rick? Have you guys seen Rick at all? I don't know where Rick is. Rick was supposed to be on here. I don't know where he is. I don't know. Yeah, I'm... Rick, we, we, we need you. You know, it's big news down in Miami. We need you, sir. Where you at? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is, is he? Is, is... And we'll keep on fighting. Fellas! <laughs> what's, right? what's good, fellas? Are you good now? Huh? Are you are, are you finished? Ufini? Ufini Baba? How y'all been, man? Are you done? How y'all been? <laughs> are, are, you, are, are you done? Done what? Are you done celebrating? It's been almost two oh. weeks now. Come on, where you been, bro? Come I've on, been man. doing so many shows. Where have you been? I've been right here, bro. Like legit, I've been right here, just, <laughs> just, just soaking it in, man. You know, <laughs> like, like championship hangover. Yeah, like, come on, like it's been like two this weeks is, now. This is football time. Don't come here with that yo, basketball stuff. I ain't even, I ain't even, I ain't even start the hangover yet. Like, yo, we not even, we haven't even begun, bro. Bro, can, oh, can we get man. serious now? Like, right, like we here, man. We here. Okay, Let's do I'm this, gonna get, okay, okay, I'm gonna get on with my show. Okay, I'm gonna get on with the show. Uh, let me give you guys the standings before we start off. Let me give you. Let, let me do some screen sharing again. So, sorry for the fans out there. This is the new technology doing the screen sharing. I want to give everybody a, an an update on our uh, standings as this comes up. Give me one second. I'll, excuse me. This is taking forever. Here we go. Okay. So these are our current standings for. Our uh, pickums. We have forty six for Rick, forty two for yeah. Travis, forty one for uh, Ray, and thirty eight for Ray. Now, so also Walmack defeated everyone last week. He had nine wins. Uh, shout out to Coach Walmack and Travis. Shout you're, out trailing Coach. Him, you're trailing him by three points. Three oh. points. Right now. Come on, oh. like by three points. And oh, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have. We're gonna have to double check that. You listen, know. What listen, I, mean? listen, just, I think. Oh. Listen, I think. I think I made a mistake. I, I made a mistake this pick them because based upon last week, you guys, it was terrible. Quote unquote, <laughs> it was horrible. I don't know what you guys were thinking. I don't know if you guys um, had the championship hangover like Rick, but the Pickums, like, we had seven, seven. We had lows of six. Uh, hey, I, it, was, it, was, it was a trap game. It was, it was a trap, it was a trap it was game a trap or trap week? week. Trap week. Trap week. One of those weeks. Have, it's one of those know. weeks. It, it, it's you come, six, in, you come like, in underestimating it, you know what I mean? So but listen, happens, you guys you are know? supposed to give the fans a great intel. So imagine someone's betting on the game and they go, you know what? Box office told me that this is what I'm supposed to win and I end up losing my money. And it's your fault. How, first how first can... of all, if you're betting on what, what I pick, I need a cut, okay? <laughs> yeah, for real. Right. That's a commission, man. We need commissions out here. Uh, you know what right. I mean? <laughs> But real oh, talk, Rick, I know. Go, go, go ahead, Dak. What's up? I, I know I joined like you know, two three weeks in, but I had like nine wins last week. I, I know, upset. but due to the, it, it's tough for me to include you into it because you're That's always going to be behind. It, it's tough. Oh, oh believe, the first me. Week. believe me. <laughs> after 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 this week, please don't include me. I don't want to be included. <laughs> um, but this week's. But this week's headline starts off with 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 the Floridian, uh, you know, a Florida resident, New York native. Um, Rockland County's favorite son, Ricardo Etienne, and he called it. And I'm going to give him the floor because he wanted to talk about this. Uh, over the summer, he was Tua, Tua, Tua. Now we're going Tua, Tua, Tua when they come back from the bye week uh, starting uh, not next week, but the following week. 
what are your initial yeah. thoughts about this move to go to two or so, like after in going into week, I guess eight, right? It'd be or nine. Um, yeah, so six, seven, eight, yeah. Eight, so yeah, eight, I mean, eight. okay, so 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 before we even get to Tua, we, we're gonna flash back a little bit. Before I even start, shout out to Dak. I wasn't on last week to be able to um, send thoughts and prayers to Dak. You hate to see somebody go down like that. But at the same time, shout out to him for being able to sit down um, on the couch on Monday um, collectively with the world as the entire Jones family found out abruptly that uh, the Red Rocket is not that Prescott. So pay that man. Um, anyways, as far as um, right, two of us, we lost money. Straight up. Um, before I get to Tua, I want to start. My overall thoughts have, have, a, have a general theme, and that general theme is one Adam Crazy Eyes Gates. Um, I'm going to start in Tennessee first. A couple weeks ago, I did mention that I love what I was seeing from the Titans. Um, their offense was looking really, really prolific, and they weren't even fully healthy. Um, you got Ryan Tannehill, who was on the cusp of being tossed out of this league, primarily because of Adam Gase, who in his past 15 starts without Adam Gase is 12 and three, two and one in the playoffs, uh, made it to a, a conference championship game. You beat Brady along the way. You beat the MVP along the way. You lose to the Chiefs, but you actually beat them during the season. Um, Tannehill in those starts, 4,000 yards, 400, uh, 4,110 yards, 40 touchdowns, six interceptions. Those are MVP numbers. If you're looking at that in, it, in its entirety in one season, that's MVP caliber football, and he was almost on his way out of the league. Now people are going to say, all right, well, he's got Henry in the background, so it makes his job easier. Correct. Now let's not forget, in, uh, in Miami, he had Jay Ajayi in the background, who in 2016 balled out something like 1,400 total yards from offense, um, and that was in about, I want to say, 14 games or so. Why? Because first game, did not play coach's decision. Adam Gates being the coach. For some reason, he wasn't on the field. Second two games, barely touched the field and then started getting in the groove the rest of the way. So that kind of talent doesn't make it onto the field. Why? Um, let's jump to Kenyon Drake, who we've seen can, can break home run plays at any given time. Even Jay Ajayi, two back-to-back 200-yard games. So we know what type of talents those were as backs. Okay, folks will say, well, maybe in Miami he didn't have an A.J. Brown to throw to. Okay, but he did have Devontae Parker who had a breakout career season last year where he should have made the, uh, Travis's favorite list, the, uh, the the top 100 list. He got robbed of that list based off of his productivity. Once he got out from under Adam Gase, once again, was almost on his way out of Miami because of Adam Gase, you know? So we jumped to what we saw in Miami on Sunday. Um, after the game, I said that it was one of, if not the biggest games in franchise history for the Dolphins. People are like, you're crazy. All they did was beat the Jets. How is that monumental? I'll tell you why it's monumental. Um, when Adam Gase left that team, he left the cover bare, you know, and um, that team decided to, to start from scratch, hit reset. They put an amazing leadership group together. Um, they, they put out a plan and decided to stick to that plan. They um, harvested their, their talent for all types of draft collateral, which we're starting to see some of which pay off. They came into a season last year where everybody knew they were tanking for two. The whole mindset was you go out there and you lose on purpose. You know what that does to young uh, players, uh, a team that has a lot of young players, rookies like that, when you're telling them we want you to go out and lose on purpose so we can go out and get some guys that could possibly replace you. They started that process out along the way. Those kids started balling. They started developing. They looked really good towards the end of last season. And while all of that was happening, they were collecting wins. Guess what? they still ended up with the guy that they were trying to lose all of their games to be in position to get anyway. So to have that type of productivity from these kids and then still get that guy, awesome win. So when you come up against the Jets, you come up against um, Adam Gase in that spot, it's, it, it wasn't no surprise that they went with Tua right then and there as kind of like a passing of the torch right in front of Gase to say, hey, remember how you left us? Here's how we're looking right now, and here's where we're going to be going um, moving forward. A couple of series before Tua went in, I started having the conversations. People were saying it's Tua time, it's Tua time. I was adamant in the chats. I was like, absolutely not. Let's put him out there because I know even in blowout fashion, in garbage time, you put him out there for a couple of series, there's no way you walk back and take him off that field and go back to fits as you started. I knew what that meant. 
at the time I wasn't necessarily all in. I wanted it to make I wanted to make sure that they were making the right decision. Um, I'm gonna trust that leadership that they put in place. I'm gonna trust the plan. In my mind, everybody always said after the buy was probably going to be two a time anyway. So this is kind of along those lines. I think they probably snuck in those last two series just to specifically flip the middle finger to Adam Gase right there in that spot. So he Rick, could see I'm sorry. Uh, I, 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 I hate to cut you off, but um, uh, uh, I only do this for breaking news. According to Manny, he mm-hmm. says um, uh, AB has been reinstated week eight and Seattle's looking to sign him. That's there you go. Yeah, just, just seen that yeah. couple calls. Yeah, Adam, yeah. Sch- Adam yeah. Schechter came through with that. Yeah, so sorry, but go, go ahead, Rick. I just wanted to get that out there. Thank okay. you, Manny, for that, man. Thank you for, th- thank you for always being on Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're good. That's 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 great news. Um, Before I even continue, uh, so reinstated means no further penalties as far as um suspensions? He's good to go or what? We don't know yet. He, he, it sound, he should be good to go as soon as the team's ready to sign him. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, that's, if, that's a good look. See, and if Seattle get him, man, whoo. Yeah, that's um, a good look. That, yeah, so, so ugly. So, so Rick, overall, you're you're pleased with the move and you're excited to see the future of your team then? Yeah, I mean, that's where I, I was just getting to the end of it now. I mean, again, seeing everything going on, I'm excited. Uh, I trust the coaching uh, staff. We're in a position where we can take this division. So if they feel like Tua is ready and gives us the best opportunity to do that going forward, there are some reports out there saying that Fitz necessarily didn't know at the time that it was necessarily going to happen. I hope that's not the case because I feel like we deserve, uh, he deserves a lot better than that. Um, but just moving on to my final points, getting to the Jets and Adam Gase specifically. Um, this season and specifically what we've seen in, on Sunday from the talent of Ryan Tannehill, from what's going on in Miami and what's going on in uh, in New York with the Jets, I feel like Sunday would have been like, if, if he was on trial for his job this season, Sunday would have been that closing argument. And generally you could say, hey, the prosecution rests, fired this dude. But the fact that they seem to now be in tech mode themselves and are completely hitting reset, how ironic is, is it that he's probably not going to lose his job now because he sucks at it. The fact that he is a loser now makes him the best possible coach for the Jets because they want to lose. And and to me, that's just absolutely ridiculous. All right. Thank you, Rick, for that essay on <laughs> your Miami Dolphins. I don't ever <laughs> I mean, I take two, I take two weeks off. I got to pull up. Talking. What happened? I don't want to never hear nothing about Come me. On. All right. I had, I, I, I had two weeks off, man. I had to, hey, I had to hey, come, hey, Rick, that, come through. Hey, Rick, that ain't forward. directed at you. That's directed at Carl. Wow. All right. Let's, let's, let's get to these points, man. Okay. All right. So what's our biggest takeaway from a week uh, – this past week, week six, is it Tom Brady and his excellent performance? Meanwhile, I kind of pick Green Bay to win, and Tom mm. Brady pressed us to come out and have a, a strong game, or or is it how bad the Cowboys played and how terrible they stunk up on Monday Night Football? What's the headline here? I mean, I, I would look at it this way: it's not it's not necessarily the story about Tom Brady. I'm more concerned about the Packers. I'm starting to think that this team is much of a is a finesse type team. I mean, this is again in what the past two seasons where another team has come in out physical them and punched them in the mouth Mm -hmm. and they did not respond and that's kind of concerning for me because come january come december and january that's when we talk the smash mouth football so i need to see this team come out and start being a more physical team at the point of attack because that worries me okay declan what are your thoughts here what is your uh, takeaway from week six uh, I thought there's a lot of crazy games in week six, especially on Monday night. Um, um, first of all, a big takeaway I feel like is Pat Mahomes never bet against him in primetime games. Uh, his rookie year is mm-hmm. 0 for 4 in primetime game. Uh, excuse me, his second year, but his first year starting. Uh, that that whole idea of having him um, lose primetime games has completely gone out the window. Uh, concern for Josh Allen and the Bills, he went from an MVP candidate to a little bit on the outside looking in. Uh, potentially he's still got time to turn that back around. Uh, I'm also really uh, concerned with the Cowboys. They went up against a depleted Arizona Cardinal team and, you know, couldn't get it done even with Andy Dalton. And, and that was embarrassing. Zeke fumbled. Uh, the, the Cardinal defense completely, uh, excuse me, rattled the. Uh, the Call what it is. That they, the bet. Call it what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what, Deck, Deck, Deck. I have a saying that goes, 
when you wet the bed, it's time for you to change the sheets. So they wet the bed, change the sheets. Right, like, he's trying to be, he's trying to be <laughs> nice about it. Now, no, say it is. They wet that the was bed. terrible. It, it was disgusting. Um, if we had to give our game balls here, who are we giving game balls to? I know we, we, we skipped it last week, but for this week, um, offensive, defensive, game balls. Deck, let me start with you. Who you, you got here? Uh, so offensively, I'm going to go with Matt Ryan. Uh, he threw for 371 and four touchdowns against the Minnesota Vikings, uh, a week where his head coach uh, and GM were, were, I almost said killed, uh, excuse me, fired. Uh, yeah. So GM and coach were fired. Comes in, now you get the defensive uh, coordinator, Raheem Morris, as the head coach. Absolutely destroys the Vikings, blows them out of the water. The defense played pretty good, but Matt Ryan played even better. He put on the best performance out of any quarterback in week six. So for offense, he's going to get my game ball. On the defensive side of the ball, I'm going to have to go with my boy, Buda Baker, safety, Arizona oh. Cardinals. Seven tackles, one sack, a forced fumble on Zeke Elliott. And for the cherry on top, icing on the cake, to top it off, he gets an interception. For me, that was a no-brainer. All right, Travis, I think, that, I think that was his. I think that was his coming out party right there, man. Yep. I mean, a lot of people don't know about Buda Baker, but he's been a playmaker for a while. Uh, offensively, I'm going to go with Derrick Henry, man. I said it in the group chat the other day. What Derrick Henry does makes no sense. Scientifically, from a human standpoint, he should not exist. He's a freak. To be able to, He's a freak. To be able to move at that speed, at that size, he had 212 rushing yards and 52 reception yards and two TDs. Um, for my defensive player, I'm going to go with Calais Campbell, man. Had a great game, five tackles, three sacks, and four tackles for loss and a winning – a com- well, they almost gave it up to the Eagles, uh, but they managed to keep that lead. Okay, so did you say defensive too? Yeah, defense is Clay is Campbell. Okay, Rick, who you got? Um, so my top two guys were both mentioned. Uh, Buda Baker absolutely came out there and showed he's worth that bread, man. He had a phenomenal game um, in prime time when everybody's watching. And then Derrick Henry, again, we can't speak enough about him, man. That dude is a freak of nature to be that size, that fast, that shifty, that strong. I mean, he is a beast. And he is, uh, again, Tannehill is looking really good. But we all know, man, uh, what, what Derrick Henry is able to do in that backfield is really helping to push that team to success. Um, but since both of my guys were mentioned, I do want to uh, give a shout out to my guy Fitz, man. I got to give Brian Fitzpatrick uh uh, a, a shout out. I'm going to give him an honorary game ball. Um, I said it in the preseason. There's there's not many other folks that I would have rather have in the position to bring to along um, as, as a starter to get ready to hand off that baton. So uh, dude is super classy. He's been all over the league playing forever. Y'all He's doubt hurt. that man He's all the really time. He's really hurt though. Every. He is, no, he is, I, I, and, it's, I, I, and again, I, I really I hope to do that game Patrick. ball because Ryan Fitzpatrick is a pro, man. You saw when yeah, he absolutely. was going in, he was out there just as hype as everybody yeah. else, man. It just exactly you don't find exactly. you don't find too many people like that, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. There was a report I, I was just reading in one of the character. group chats. Yeah, there was a report yeah. I think someone posted in one of our group chats where. Like his feelings are hurt, you know. Like he was, he was wanted to win. And that's he got pulled. It, it's, that's that's understandable and, and, because I, I think my fault. Let, let me get this out real quick, Rick. I think this was ahead. always the plan to get him mm-hmm. in after the bye week. But correct me if I'm wrong. Their original bye week wasn't until like week eleven, right? Yeah, exactly. So it exactly. got changed it around. So I mm-hmm. think it was always the plan to move him in after the bye week. The bye week just got changed and. I, going into week 11, I don't think we can sit here and say they would have had this, you know, the record that they do have, and it would have yeah. been okay. So I just think it's the circumstances, but I, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick is a true pro, man. He does deserve that, a game ball for that. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. One, one last, one last bow I'll put on top of that real quick is that I know there's some speculation that maybe the Dolphins might think, hey, maybe we could move him to Dallas by any chance. I know Ryan Fitzpatrick has been very adamant about being happy in the state of Florida. He purchased a home in Tampa. Um, that's where his family lives. He didn't even get a place in Miami. He goes back and forth between Miami and T- Miami and Tampa because Tampa is supposed to be the forever home. So I hope they don't move him unless he actually wants it that way and he sticks around, stays in that locker room. That's a guy I want in my locker room. No disrespect, but I don't know why anyone would dis- no disrespect, but I don't know why anyone would decide to buy a home in Florida. That's neither here nor there. That's oh wow. <laughs> I mean <laughs> Hold up, hold up, I'll give you a tour. Let me, let me touch on let me touch on one thing real quick, man. <laughs> Let me touch on one thing real quick, Carl. Let me ask you a question, man. Has the NFL stumbled onto something with the scheduling here? Because I'm liking this two games on Monday night. 
I like the game on Tuesday. I was, I, listen, I will I say this. I, Shout out to Rick. Rick called this, and he told me. Yo, I, I was going to bring it. <laughs> yeah, he said he, he said <laughs> feel, this because like, we I, were talking about this preliminary. Before the NFL season started, he goes, yo, yo. Carl. Don't be surprised if the NFL does a flex schedule where you get a game on a Tuesday and take advantage because mm-hmm. baseball's wrapping up. There's no NBA in the fall until January. They're the yep. only sport that's going to be and on. And the way take- you don't have to worry about ticket sales and, and, and exactly. changing, yeah. changing so tickets. Yeah, so Rick was right. On, you know? yeah. Rick told me that back it, in I July, like August. Cause you, he was right. He was right about that. You, get, yeah. you can get the one on Thursday, which kind of starts up the week. Then you get all you get mm-hmm. to your main games on Sunday. You get and then you start to die down throughout the rest of it. You get two on Monday and then one on Tuesday. I like it. I think they need to keep guys. Going. Yeah. Let me play some quick trivia while I have you here, right? Just just bear with me for one second. I'll do some quick trivia on the sports hit list. Two and four. One, four, and one. One and huh. five. One and five. Huh. Who wins the division? <laughs> <laughs> it's sad to say that the Giants have <laughs> got a shot. Like it's crazy that we are here. That the Giants can have the hangover. Like, it's so crazy that that NFC East is so trash. But, I mean, the injuries man. are piling up in Philly, man. I uh-huh. sent the screenshot to the group. Their entire offense, besides their center and quarterback, is injured. It's getting crazy out yeah. there. Uh, they might get a few receivers back. But at the end of the day, I think Philly finds a way to win this division, man. Okay, Rick, who wins the division? Answer my trivia question, man. What's up? Who wins the division? Listen, to, to be honest, in the spirit of what Travis just mentioned about the flexibility of the schedule, I'm going to need the league to come up with a flexibility of, of playoff. There's no reason why any one of those teams should host a playoff game this year. Absolutely no reason. <laughs> to be honest, you look at the <laughs> NFC West. They shouldn't even be there. Why they shouldn't even be there, but imagine hosting, you know? Right. So le- legit, you look at the NFC West where they can easily go three strong into the playoffs, possibly all four in the playoffs. I would love to see some crazy nonsense where the league just says, hey, look, sorry, guys, y'all ain't cutting it this year and give that playoff spot to somebody else because <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay, this is ridiculous. So you're, Six so games in, answer, that's ridiculous. So you're saying no team deserves to go in there. Declan, no team deserves to go in there. <laughs> Hold on, guys. The CFL is really sitting there still the, drinking. The CFL's calling. <laughs> <laughs> they want the NFC. Right, hold on. That's by CFL, you probably mean college football, right? <laughs> we ain't even gonna send them to Canada. <laughs> Yo, uh, right oh, now, shout out to the, know, you see, you, you see the Cowboys the fans, fans, right? right? Yeah. The commissioner said stop it. That's how the rules are set up. He's like, stop it. <laughs> but, uh, he likes his chances. He likes his chances. <laughs> Um, the reason why I, I mentioned that, that no, yeah, yeah, I ain't making nothing. The reason why I mentioned that is because Thursday night's matchup sees the Eagles versus oh, the Giants. So man. this is where we start going into the next week, week seven. We got to start with yeah. your predictions. What are our predictions going into this game? Let's start with the Giant fan, Declan. Who we have here? Oh my God! All right. So obviously, you guys know how I feel about going into Philly. Uh, I'd rather go to jail. <laughs> they they have they one, have they one have at the stadium. They got one at the stadium. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure you'd wind up in jail. Um, you guys know how I feel about going to Philly. I don't like it, obviously. I think I think they should be the only team without fans moving forward. But in terms of actually uh, the game itself, I think the Giants would have had better chances had they beat Dallas two weeks ago, uh, almost two weeks ago on Columbus Day weekend. That was a game they needed to pull out. Uh, they beat Washington by a point, uh, by a failed two-point conversion, which – kind of upsetting i would like to take uh, my giants to see the un- uh excuse me take my underdog giants to see the upset here but i'm gonna have to go with the eagles and a close one though but i just think it's gonna be too much for the giants okay rick who you got um d- d- just to pick back off of uh him mentioning he 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 wouldn't want to go to philly i don't know if y'all saw it now but the, the first game back with fans limited fans during a pandemic of course eagle fans still managed to have a brawl in the in the uh, in the seats, like I Philly. mean, Philly, Philly, yeah. Philly, Philly no do. matter the what, like it like makes no sense. Yeah. Um, between yeah, these two, Philly's again, team is so injured, their fans are gonna get injured next. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they're gonna call them from the stands to play. You know, um, this is one of those games that I hope we lightning strikes and it just ends up being somewhat entertaining. It's probably gonna be brutal. Um, with all of the injuries on the Eagles side, I can honestly say that while the uh, while the Giants continue to look bad, 
they've shown little bits of marginal improvement here and there, specifically with, um, you know, the running back position kind of getting some productivity there from, um, damn, Brainfart, Freeman, uh, from Devontae Freeman. And then, you know, the defense hasn't been terrible. Um, so I'm going to lean Giants, but boy, man, we need to flex this one out. Give me something else. Okay, so Rick goes with the Giants. Let's go. Box office, who you got here? Do, do I get a half a point for, if I pick a tie? No, there's no way <laughs> to get a half a point. Hey, yeah. if, it's a, if, it's, if you pick a tie, it's a tie. That's a full point. We don't do, we right. don't, we don't do <laughs> half a points on the hit list. We Those are voided. Any ties are voided. Uh, They're voided. There's no oh, half a point. Oh, God. Do I don't want to team to pick on this one, man. So get, I know he is because he's still you. celebrating. F the Lakers. Sorry, I said it. Yeah, I said it. Uh, Go I got, ahead, Travis. <laughs> big mad. I don't like to pick road games on Thursday nights. So I'm going to go Philly on this one, man. All right, Philly. Okay. It's going to be right. more exciting than you guys think, though. All right, gentlemen. Because yeah, so. when, you, when you're both bad, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so, gentlemen, before I let you go, our main event coming up at 5 o'clock, we got the Brady-LeBron debate. That's what the people want. We give it to them. Uh, uh, Travis is shaking his head because he believes I set up a failure for the NFL. But I kid you not, I was inspired by Stephen A. Smith in first take. I saw the headline on first take and said, hmm, oh, let me see Stephen what my panel was thinking about. Let me see NBA what my panel was thinking about. You... <laughs> He's an NFL guy. He does segments about the Cowboys all the time. What are you talking I, about? Uh, I know, but we, we all know he, that. he's no. mainly an NFL. I mean, he, we know yeah. he's mainly an NBA guy. He, anyway, he, just answer know. the question. Are you going the, the most dominant in their sport? Are you going Brady or are you going Bron? Come on, pick one. Who you got? I'm going to go LeBron, man. It's simple. I mean, a play. In the NBA, an individual player has more of an out, more of an effect on the outcome of a single game, man. NFL okay. is more of a team sport, so I'm gonna have to go uh, LeBron, man. I can make an argument for that, but that's a conversation for another day. Rick, who you got? I'm piggybacking off of his sentiment. Like, don't try to make this a debate over off of which sport is better. Which is more dominant has nothing to do with which is a better sport. To the point, you're talking five guys on the floor at any given time for a basketball team. So if 20% of that is amazing, obviously that 20% is going to be have an opportunity to be more dominant than one of 11 on just one side of the ball at any given time. So technically one of 22. I mean, you know, let's let let's let's stop trying to be cute here, Carl. But obviously <laughs> no, it's LeBron. It's a fair Obviously question. it's LeBron who's it's more dominant question. because of that shenanigans. It's, a fair, it's <laughs> a fair question. It's a fair question. Come on. Declan, Declan, what do you think here, man? Is it the clean suit you're going with Bron? Uh, I think you're gonna have to, but there is a clear argument for Brady where I think I could have been on this panel to do it. I, I sat back because I didn't want to argue against LeBron because it's tough. Uh I think it, if you want to go championships, we could start there, but it's going to have to be Braun. But I like Brady's killer mentality more. Okay. Uh, next week, I'm going to give you guys a quick preview. Uh, to begin the show, we're going to try something new. It's called the open segment. We're beginning with Stone Cold versus The Rock. Who, do you, who, who would you take? And everyone would get two minutes. Anyone could pull up. You can come in for two minutes to give your argument, and then you leave. That's the way we're going to do it next week. So you guys think about that. I don't know if you've ever been into pro wrestling, but the, the name Stone Cold and The Rock ring a bell. It should ring a bell if you if you know yeah. anything about pop culture. I, so, I, right, Travis? Might have, to pull, might have to pull up to that woman. That's the last hey. time I actually. That's the last time I actually watched wrestling. So you know, I might have some memories about that. One, we'll <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, so, everybody should try to pull up on that one. And, yeah. Listen, any sports hit list contributor, any fan want to pull up to answer the question, Stone Cold or The Rock, I'm giving you two minutes of your fame to come up and tell me why you why, why you picking Stone Cold or why you picking The Rock. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. Guys, thank you so much. Rick, I'll see you later for the Mount Rushmore. No more drinking yes, and no more shenanigans on that. Come on, you got to be serious. <laughs> I think, and I'm, telling I think, you right I think now, I'm all out now, man. Listen, I gotta... <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Rick, 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 oh. listen. I'm going to tell you something right now, okay? I know Jay Lex is your cousin. I do not want to hear Scottie Pippen's name come up in this Mount Rushmore. I'm going to be honest with you right now. Scottie Pippen's <laughs> name should not come up whatsoever. I'm letting you know. Hey, you, know hey, you, you, know, you know I'm bringing them. The, the Listen, you know I'm bringing them Jerry Rice vibes. Say it again. <laughs> Say it again, Rick. You're going to do what? I said, I said, you know, I'm bringing those Jerry Rice vibes. No, man, we can't do that. <laughs> Listen, no, do not, do not go anywhere near Scottie Pippen. Please, I don't know how much Jay Lex might have paid you, but I could sniff it a mile away. I could totally sniff that one. You guys yeah, take listen. care, and I'll see you guys soon. I'm gonna go recycle these, man. Get them <laughs> right. Go make, go make the liquor store run. It's still open. What's up? Stay to it. Stay to it. 
The only thing that's going to make this debate really annoying is the comment section because somehow, somehow LeBron mm. fans find a way you to know. be more annoying than Patriots fans that are from yeah, Boston. Absolutely. absolutely. Look, you guys take care. Come, come that's the cream of the right crop now. of annoying fans right there. Coming up next right now, we got is the MVP uh, trophy overrated or not between Falco and Walmack? That's a good one. So you guys take care. You're watching the Sports Hit List by the fans and for the fans live on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Let me bring in some of my basketball contributors, Mr. Brandon Falco. He's growing in the beard. I don't know why. How you doing, sir? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yo, yo, yo. Don't. Don't. <laughs> uh, coach, coach is in the building. Coach, how you doing, sir? Doing good, man. Doing good. Doing I good. wanted to let, let you know um, you are in the lead against Travis in the pickums for the Sports Hit List right now. You are leading by three games. Uh, you're leading by three games against Travis, 36 to 33. So congratulations on that front. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised I'm at that. I'm 10 and 3. It's not and cool. again? You're not in it, man. You're not in it, bro. You, you weren't there it. the second week when we started, it. so I can't count your picks, bro. You're not in it, man. not in it, but today we are here. Brandon Falco has had an outlandish take for weeks now. He said, and I quote, that the NBA MVP, regular season MVP, is overrated. So Walmack said he wanted to debate it with him. Falco, I'm going to give you the floor first since this is your take. Make your argument. Here's the thing. When I say the MVP award is overrated, I'm not saying it doesn't matter because, of course, it matters. The moderator of this debate loves to take everything I say out of context, and I'm not going to let him do it. When we rank players' legacies, us as fans and media are the ones who rank players' legacies, right? So all I'm saying is the player's body of work and an individual player performance means more to a player's legacy than the regular season MVP. Carl, you're a professor, so you should know this very well. As a teacher, you give out tests and you give out homework, correct? I do. This is true. Okay. Are they, are they graded the same? When, you, when you're grading students at the end of the semester, are they weighed the same? No, of course not. Homer, homework has a separate grade and so do tests. And it's probably like, let's say, for example, 70% for tests, 30% homework, homework right, and participation, right? And the old cliche, teachers always say, oh, well, if you don't do your homework and you don't participate, your best grade you could get, even if you get 100 on every single test, is a 70, right? Because one weighs more than the other. One is more important than the other. It's not saying one doesn't matter, just one is more important than the other. That is all I'm trying to say here. When you do your homework, it prepares you better for the test, and you could ultimately, that's how you're going to ace the class. Do your homework, be prepared, and then ace the test. That's how you could get... That's how you could ace the class. In basketball, you could get the regular season MVP award. You could rack up accolades in the regular season. But when we're going to rank players all time and how you're going to really elevate your legacy is doing it in the playoffs. Your individual body of work in the playoffs, playoff runs, championships, and finals MVP. That's all I'm saying. The floor is yours. Okay, but let me have a quick, since you wanted to. No, nah, no, nah, don't, don't jump in, Carl. I mean, listen, I don't listen. Want him, I don't one want quick comment. Think. No, I just want to say all one right. quick comment because he came all at right. me. He opened the, the floodgates. All I'm going to say is this, is that a student could fail their test. And I've seen this happen before. They could do terrible on their test and they excel and they participate really well and they still get a good grade. That's all do I'm going to say. Do they get an that, A? That, that, no. That, that, do they get an A? No. You can't prove that. But go ahead, Walmack. The floor is yours. But just, 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 just to counter, and I'm happy to be here with you, Brandon. I told you, I see, I see a bright future in you and I wanted you to meet the coach and come with the coach so I could school you and you leave a better person. So let's get back to it. Let's use some of your words first. Let's see some of your words. So you said uh, you got to get the A, so it's the test, right? So yep. let, let me ask you a question. If you don't go to class, you don't get class, class participation. Okay. If you don't pass the regular test before the finals, you can't sometimes in college, the professor won't even let you take the finals. So with that, with that being said, you cannot get into the GOAT debate with just a finals MVP. Now, let me explain why. Andre Iguodala is not considered one of the greatest players ever in the NBA. He will never be considered one of the greatest players ever in the NBA. But he has a finals MVP. Why is that? Because the finals is where we, rep where we, we showcase the greatest teams. It's the teams versus the individual accolades. What a regular season MVP shows is that for the duration of 82 games, you bring it almost every night to the highest level on the court. What the final says is between four or seven games, you bring it to the highest point. Case in point, let's go to the 2007 
uh, San Antonio Spurs. Mm -hmm. Who was the MVP, if you remember that one? Tony Parker. Tony Parker. Tony Parker, right? Uh, did he have a better season? Was he a better player? Was he at a higher level than LeBron James that season who won MVP? No, he, LeBron didn't win it that year. I mean, excuse me. Was he better? It's not, not, not winning it. Was he better than LeBron James who did not win finals MVP? Excuse me. Yeah, LeBron wasn't that good in that finals. No, he shot 35% average 22. Was, he, was, he, wasn't bet, he was just on par with Tony Parker. But you know who was better than Tony Parker? Tim Duncan for the entire playoffs. But the media decide to give it to Tony Parker. And that's what happens. And that's why the finals MVP always gets a little shade because sometimes it's these individuals who tend to vote on them and then we don't get the full picture. You get what I'm saying? Let's, we can even go even further. Joe Dumas, you know, Joe Dumas won the 90, 1990s final right. MVP, right? Mm -hmm. Would you put that MVP of the finals MVP for Joe Dumas over, let's say, Michael Jordan's first regular season MVP? Of course not. Of course not. Why? Because it's 82 games. You know how hard it is to do it for 82 games? And, 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 and we all know when you get to the finals, it's the coaches too. You get the mismatches. You get the coaching changes. You get the best teams versus the best teams. The best player, however, sometimes even even showcase because their team doesn't make it. Allen Iverson against the Lakers. He was by far the best player that series. Mm -hmm. That series was Allen Iverson versus the Lakers dream team. And mm -hmm. Allen Iverson was the best player, but he will not win finals MVP because the better team won the award. So that's why I'm not saying that the finals MVP is not something you use for accolades. Yes, you use it to debate accolades, but the regular season is not overrated. To say to do it for 82 games, in and out, not a load management. You're one of the best players in one of the toughest leagues because in terms of how long you have to play the game, some guys playing 40 minutes a game, that to me means a lot. And to me, that means more for your for your individual statistic than just a finals MVP because too many fly-by-night finals MVPs are thrown out there. We got the Edric Dollars. We got the JoJo Whites. We got the Joe Dumars. We got the Dennis Johnson with uh, call Celtics. Dennis Johnson was not a better player than uh, the best player on the Celtics that year. He just had the best four to seven game stretch. Four to seven games does not outweigh seven months. Now, Falco, let me ask you this question. Do you feel that the award is overrated because uh, over the last few years, there's been some controversy in who actually wins the award. Some people can debate that, you know, James Harden should have won it uh, the year Russell Westbrook won it, or, you know, the year Giannis won it, James Harden should have won another back-to-back. -back. Is that the reason why you're taking the stance that it's overrated or, or not? It's not necessarily, like, them getting it wrong, but that does have a factor. But, like, we could argue the same thing with Finals MVP. And I'm not arguing right now Finals MVP versus regular season MVP, which we already did. I'm just saying the award is overrated because I think your body of work in the postseason, which necessarily doesn't mean – the finals MVP. I'm just saying you as an individual, what you've done in the playoffs matters more than the regular season MVP. And this is like, this year is a great example of it. Obviously everyone knows I'm a huge LeBron James supporter and I don't mean to like try to flatter him right now, but, but it's the truth. The totality of the season, the regular season and the postseason, October 17th, 2019 is, is was opening day of the 1920 season up until October 11th of 2020. If you look at the totality of the season, the duration and that includes regular season and postseason. Who had a better season, Giannis Antetokounmpo or LeBron James? The regular season MVP award winner, winner versus the Finals MVP award winner. It was clearly LeBron. Here's but the thing. That's, Here's hold on, hold on. But that's just one. See what you're doing is you're using one example of when it worked for to to say that a whole entire uh, award is overrated. So you're just saying it because this year. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Wait, because you're saying because LeBron just happened to win. So that's why that argument makes sense for you. But what if LeBron James would have just say, for instance, and I hate to use ifs, Carl. I'm so oh, sorry, but he, oh, he brought oh, back oh, into oh, it. Yeah, it. <laughs> you did. You did, Coach. Ifs. I know oh, you can't use it. No, I got to can't. be fair. There's no ifs right. in sports. We use right. the facts. So I don't got to use an a, a if. I can use an exact, an exact, uh, an oh. exact season. So we're, we're going to go on a, a season where Kobe Bryant uh, may have not, uh, excuse me, no, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan wins the MVP in uh, finals MVP against Karl Malone when Karl Malone 90. wins the regular season MV MVP. 97. Now, 97. Now, we all, a lot of people say that was, the, they robbed Jordan, whatever the case may be, but Karl Malone to his team, a team was just as valuable as Michael Jordan, and that's what the people voted on. Michael Jordan still ended up winning the finals MVP that year. It doesn't take away what Karl Malone did that season. 
It does not because sometimes it may not work that way. We may get a, a great player like LeBron who doesn't make it to the championship. So now what are you going to say? What, what would you say? Giannis, now Giannis deserves well, the MVP because the other better player didn't make it to the finals? Let me throw me the alley This is like Bron to Brown right now. All right, so on that note, 2018 is a perfect example. James Harden was the MVP. LeBron finished second. That was probably LeBron's best offensive season. The totality of the season, they both got eliminated. No, excuse me. LeBron got eliminated in the finals. James Harden did in the Western Conference Finals. The totality of the season, start to finish, LeBron clearly had a better season. We elevated his rankings the following year based on what he did in the postseason. Here's another thing with LeBron. I, and another example, 2018-2019, uh, Giannis wins the MVP award. But Kawhi Leonard, the totality of the season, had a better season than Giannis Antetokounmpo. Clear as day. And another thing with LeBron, I hate to just keep using because you guys know how I feel about him. No, you don't. No, you don't. First of all, stop interrupting me. I'm speaking. No. Le- 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 LeBron James has been regarded as the best player in the world for over a decade now, right? He hasn't won an MVP award since 2013. Why do we still call him the best player in the world? Because every postseason, he reminds us he's the best player in the game. He reminds us every postseason he is head and heels above the competition. Okay, so let me ask this question. So so you know what? Let let me ask you, Falco. So what year was – so you believe if we're going to give him that nod, a fair question is he deserved the MVP every single year from 2013 between now and 2013 over the last seven years? Is that what you're saying? I didn't, I didn't, no, I said, no, but, but I'm asking, no, that's what you're saying. You're saying that, but now you know, you're no, no, this, this, now. Go I, I knew this debate was going to be two on one. I can't prepare. It's not two on one. Oh, I asked you a, no, I asked you a fair question. Yeah. I just asked you a question. Do you believe LeBron deserved the MVP over the last seven years? It's a fair so question. It's not a bias. The regular season MVP award is just a regular season award. So no, but I'm saying the totality of the season includes the playoffs. He reminded us between the regular you just season said, and the post. Call, call. You can't let him get away with just saying nonsense. You just said for the whole decade, LeBron James proved that he was the best player every season. You wait, wait, you said that. Then you said you can't give the MVP to somebody who doesn't have a better season because you got to include the playoffs. So if LeBron James doesn't finish with a championship and he's not the best player in the finals who wills his, who makes his team win a championship, how can you say LeBron is the best player? head above everybody for the whole decade. You can't okay. use one argument when you want to. Mac, so Mac, let me ask you this question. Do you feel like the 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 uh, the uh media got it right every single year over the last seven years? No, the media never always gets it right. That's why we debate. The media doesn't get it right. And it goes to our opinions, what we think the MVP is that season. And I'm great with debating that. I'm, there's no problem with debating who should have won MVP. This year, if you would have said LeBron or Anthony Davis over Giannis, I would have said that's a great debate. You have points on both sides. You know, Steph Curry, when he won his back-to-back, if you would have thrown somebody else in there for one of the seasons, okay, I'm cool with that. You know, even James Harden, he could have won one, another one with the numbers that he was putting up in the regular season, which is the 82 games before the playoffs. Every single sport in America has this. Every single sport almost in the world has it. A regular season and they have a, a, a finals or, or playoffs because they know great teams win championships. Individuals somewhat, somehow in the regular season can make a team good and show how great they are. That's the difference with the award. You cannot say it's overrated only because a better team goes to the finals and maybe win it and a team doesn't have the opportunity to go to the finals. So how can Giannis, how can Giannis defend, how can you defend Giannis if he, can't make, if he doesn't make it to the finals? See, I'm saying I'm saying individuals body of work that doesn't mean your team winning the championship I said the individuals body of work but you 20, 2014 up until 2020 outside of the 2019 season LeBron James has led his team as far as they could possibly go he's proved with his individual performances not necessarily his team winning but him individually proved why he's the best player in the world we don't call LeBron the best player in the world because of what he does in the regular season 2014 to 2020, he hasn't been the best regular season player. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. I'm not saying just... I'm understanding that, but you also got to understand that LeBron takes nights off. LeBron, exactly. Yeah, so, so, yes, exactly. And that's why this award is not... You can't take a night off when you win the MVP of the regular season. I know. The I'm regular not, season. I'm not saying, saying it's over, matter. but you're saying it's over. But you know what? You know oh, what hold, hold on, hold on. Hold, hold on, on one, one, real quick. And now that that's exactly like what I'm, what I wanted to get into. Guys are taking nights off. LeBron takes his uh, foot off the gas in the regular season, especially on the defensive side of the ball, to elevate in the postseason because it matters more. Kawhi Leonard with load managing literally eliminates himself 
from the award. And Kawhi Leonard is clearly a MVP caliber player. You can't see that Giannis Antetokounmpo, a back-to-back MVP winner, is better than a guy like Kobe Bryant or Shaquille O'Neal, who both have one each. You can't okay, see that. Right. Who and said you know he's what? better? Nobody you know what? Wait, to elaborate on, on that. No one said he's better. Right. I'm not saying nobody is better who doesn't get one award. I'm saying you can't say an award is overrated. Okay, but to you rate but you, the award but, right but where you know it what, is. Coach, to Brandon's right point, but, but you know what, Coach, that was my next point, and thank you for bringing that up, Falco, was Kobe and Shaq are both legends in the game. You know, you can debate if they're top, top players. players. They, only have, they only have one each. So if you're looking at the totality of their saying? careers. I'm not, you, you, all I'm saying is the totality of career shows that they didn't win the regular season MVP award. It doesn't bring the award down because they didn't win it. Do we bring great defensive players and say, oh, they only won two defensive player of, of the awards, awards um, best defensive players. So they're not great defensive players because they didn't win the award. The award is the award. It's rated right where it should be in terms of regular season. It's not overrated. Everybody gets graded on the same regular season. It's I understand like that. Up- Let me follow up again, though. But do, you, but do you believe, looking at the body of work, as Brandon would say, of Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe, should they have more than just one MVP? Or are you looking at a guy like Isaiah Thomas? Could he potentially have one and not have any at all? A guy like Dwayne Wade doesn't have any at all. Should he have one? Just like I said earlier, there's always going to be an opinionated debate when you have one or two or three of the best players in the world going for one award. That's why it makes it just, that's why the award is tougher to get because you're going against the whole entire NBA and not just only 24 players or 30 players on one or two rosters. That's what makes it tough, Carl, those exact questions. When you go through a stretch of the whole 2000s where Jordan wins the award, you know, four times and there's so many other great players who he who didn't get it or you got Steph Curry who wins it twice and you got to argue with LeBron is because every player in the world who's in the NBA, NBA is competing against each other for the regular season MVP. It makes it tougher to get from a total standpoint of how many people you have to go against. How many players, Brandon, how many, how many top players in NBA? How many top players in NBA? Name them. Wait, 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 what are you talking no, about? Like, in the NBA right now. Total, like, total. He's, he's talking total. Superstars, how many superstars are there? Eight, nine. I don't think there's more. How many, how many superstars played in the NBA Finals? Two, three. You guys exactly are going to defend Paul Akizi. <laughs> but, but, but that's my point. That's my point. You got it. In the Finals, you're not going to go against eight superstars for an award. You're only going against maybe one, maybe two on the other side. But in the NBA regular season, when everybody's playing, everybody wants Finals um, regular season uh uh, awards. Nobody's not saying I don't want the MVP. LeBron was upset he didn't get the MVP this year. He had to go against the rest of the superstars to get that MVP. When in the finals, you may only see one or two. So you can't say something's overrated when you're going against nine of the best. It's like running a marathon and you're running against the 10 best marathon runners in the world. If you win that marathon, you get to hold your head high. But if you run in a different marathon, it's only two of the best marathon runners in the world and you win that. What you gonna say? Which one you gonna say is overrated? Going against nine of them or going against two of them? Oh, hold on, Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, they're regarded as top 10 players, basically unanimous, n- unanimously. Why do we call them in the top 10 when they only have one MVP award? Because they're We're not debating that. Have... Give me another debate. See, it's just, you're no, trying no, to sidetrack. No, well, that's I have I put in examples. What they did, their moments in the playoffs is why they are so special. Kobe I'm not Bryant, saying they're Kobe. not special. See, you're Kobe. arguing something that's not, you're, you're going in a circle. Dude, We're that's what you're, that's what you're saying. It's over. You're saying that I'm trying to say that it doesn't matter. You're trying to make, make it seem like I'm saying it doesn't matter. It does matter. It's just not as important as your playoff resume that's all so then you can say you can say so then your subject your line of your line your thesis should have been this is when you got to learn how to maneuver your thesis so it could represent your thought process your thesis should have been in comparing nba greats and trying to see who was the best and who was at the top of the mountain uh nba finals mvp trumps the regular season MVP. That should have been your statement instead of saying the regular season is overrated. See, it's about using your words to I'm, argue what you want I'm to say. I'm not even just saying, I'm not just, you keep bringing up the finals MVP, which I'm not doing. I'm saying your individual body of work, which something, which can lead to the finals MVP, can lead to, well, lead to winning championships. But I'm saying what you do as an individual. Hold on, two guys I want to bring up. Kobe, what was his narrative after the three P with Shaq and Shaq left him? Oh, Kobe can't win with Shaq. How great is he? He can't win with Shaq. 2008 wins the MVP award. Oh, he still can't win with Shaq. They got eliminated in the Eastern Co- in the Western Conference Finals. So how great really is he, right? And finals, two- finals hold on, in 08. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And then 2009, Kobe Bryant wins it, wins his first finals and wins finals MVP without Shaq. And it's like, holy crap, Kobe could win without Shaq. 
LeBron, nah, it was holy um, crap. He got on, Paul stop, Gasol stop, stop for a fleece. First of all, stop coming That's what it was. He got Wait, Paul no. Gasol for a fleece. Don't say it like he just won with the regular team he had. He had a team, man. It's a different narrative. This is fans and media debating. LeBron went back to, hold on. LeBron went back to back MVPs with the Cavs in 09 and 2010. But they got to limit in the playoffs. It's like, oh, LeBron's not a real playoff performer. He's a choker. He can't do it when it matters most. So he can't elevate his legacy to with a certain all time great. Two that hold on, hold on. 2011 did the greatest meltdown. Oh, he's not he's, he's still again, he's not in a playoff performer. His game doesn't translate to the postseason. 2012, down three to two to the Boston Celtics. Has three MVPs at that point. No championships, no finals MVP. Again, all, Paul Pierce ripped the shot in his face. He's done. And then he made it up with the 45, 15, and five and ended up winning the championship and winning finals MVP. Then it's like, holy crap, okay. LeBron is okay, but why? So if if, if you you make no sense then, because if you're saying that, wait, wait, if you're saying that. You, if you're saying that has nothing to do with finals versus regular season, why are you bringing up finals? Your your statement, wait, your thesis is the regular season MVP is overrated. So, so you know, what, so, so you know what, Falco? Let me ask thesis. this: What's the fix so it doesn't be overrated in your opinion? Nah, what, Carl, you how, gotta, how, let, how can you fix Carl, the let, let, let me base? answer that question, though, Carl. Okay, okay. My point got to get across on that. What's up? What's my up? point has to get across. I'm not arguing with you when you say the finals MVP cements your individual accolades. I never said that's not the case. All but your original thesis, I only go by what people say, what people type, what people put up, was the NBA regular season is overrated. Overrated to who? It depends on what you're trying to compare. So what I'm saying is that it's not overrated because it's right where it should be, only rating players for their regular season performance. That's the only stat, that's the only thing that regular season has um, MVP is rated for. It doesn't say you're the best player in the league, including the playoffs, because we have a finals MVP. If that was the case, they wouldn't have a finals MVP, but they know they have to make that separation and that distinction. So oh, I think it's rated in its right place. MVP, regular season, rated in the right place. I want to go back to what Carl said, though. I, want, I, want, I definitely wanted to touch on that. So the way to fix it is over half the teams in the NBA make the playoffs, right? 16 out of 30 teams make the playoffs. I think there should be you could have a regular season MVP award. Sure. I think there should still be a different award that says most outstanding player, which includes the postseason, but not necessarily, not necessarily meaning win the championship and win finals MVP, but start to finish who had the better season. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you want to fix that about like, if it's overrated or how to fix that, I just believe like in a league of bet, like NBA, I wouldn't say this for MLB. I wouldn't say this for, Listen, if, I would say this LeBron, for NBA. the fact that over half the team, over half the teams make the playoffs, and you could, if you have one superstar on a team, you're basically like a lock to go to the playoffs. And if he has a top ten player with him, it's a literally a guaranteed making the playoffs. So how in the a league of the NBA, where playoffs matter more than probably any other sport, how can we not take into account the postseason? And again, you you are you are right. That how is the postseason hold on, hold on, not taken into on. account? Hold on. How is the postseason not taken into account? In the regular season MVP award. Why should it? It, 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 it is. You, nobody wins the NBA regular season MVP if their team is not in the top four of their of the of the standings on each side. Wrong, wrong. Russell Westbrook, twenty seventeen. Good try. One, one out of how many years? Good try. How many years? You see, this is what you're trying to do. You take one thing out of twenty five years and then make it like it's the it's the norm. If something happens, it's called an anomaly. When you research anomaly, if something happens once out of the blue, it's an anomaly. It's not the regular. It's not the norm. So if one person does it in thirty years. Buddy, it's not what's happening. You can't use one example and then say, this is why we have to change something. If one person gets hit crossing the street, we're going to say nobody can drive for the rest of their life? No, it's one person. So you okay. can't okay. use gentlemen, the gentlemen. MVP award in the last 20 years. What was there? Two we're, or three one person. Where you don't agree with we're it? coming up on time. Falco, That's your final point. thoughts here. Uh, someone in the comment, Pete, said uh, if LeBron had if won the MVP, would you still have been debating this? But I don't use if he asked you a question, so I don't well, want to answer. Carl, you know I've been I've been telling you this for a while that the NBA, NBA regular season award is overrated. I said this during the whole pause of the season, so I had nothing to do with Giannis winning it or not. We know I, why you said wait, it. You on, knew what was coming. On, on. You knew hold LeBron was going to win it. No, coach, you got to stop interrupting me when I'm speaking. I interrupt you conference. all the time. I am. You a young boy. You on my state. You see the Hall of Fame bomb? <laughs> I'm in the Hall of Fame. When you come, you got to wrestle to respect. When the all right, Elvis, all you, right. Let him finish. Let him finish. Yeah, yeah. Falco, your final thoughts. Yeah, bro. I, I know I keep bringing up LeBron, but it's just a perfect example. Michael Jordan is not better than LeBron because five to four in terms of regular season MVPs. No one thinks that. Why do people think Michael Jordan's better than him? Because his playoff resume is better. He has more championships, more finals MVPs, more historic moments in the postseason, and he also Michael Jordan also has less flaws than LeBron. 
LeBron has had a, probably like two or three like under underachievements and like letdowns in the postseason and disappointments. Michael Jordan doesn't have that on his watch. That's ultimately why we say Jordan is better than LeBron. If you want to say regular, if you want to compare their regular season accolades, it's a lot closer than if you take the totality of their career, including the postseason. I'm, I I agree. Michael Jordan is the best legacy of all time, no doubt about it. We say that. It's always about the championships, the finals, every piece, and his and his individual body of work in the postseason. What he did in the highest moments, moments in the postseason, is way more important than racking up regular season MVP awards. Coach, final thoughts. And if we were debating that topic, you would have won easily. Not saying you lost, because no, I no, know. no, it's no. You can't kill anybody when you're not debating what we're talking about. See, that's the thing about debates, and that's why I'm good at debates. You got to pay attention to what people are talking about and what the topic is. You spent 15 to 15 minutes talking about why the finals MVP mean, means war more on somebody's individual accolades and their respect level. You just used an example of Michael Jordan winning six and LeBron only having four as to why people think Michael Jordan is better. That was not the debate. The debate was if the regular season MVP is overrated. And it all goes to where you rate regular season MVPs. For a person like you who doesn't rate a regular MVP season over a finals NBA F- MVP season, we know what ranks more to you. We know where you rate them. But to say an entire award is overrated because of where you're trying to use it in your argument for someone to be better or worse than someone is a totally different story. My last comment is there's clearly a preseason. Well, there's a summer league MVP. We have those. They have summer league MVPs. They have regular season MVPs. They have finals MVPs. Nobody looks at a summer league MVP player and say you're not a good player because you didn't do it in the regular season because we know it's the bum summer league. The regular season is just exactly what it is. It's 82 games for teams to figure out where they're going to be in the standings so they can prepare for the playoffs. It's very tough to go through an 82 game season and play at the highest level and be one of the top three or four players in the world. To me, it's just as tough as playing in a seven game series against the best team in the world. Because sometimes that we have seen people win MVP when they're not even the most valuable player on the court. LeBron James was the most valuable player on that court when he lost to Golden State. But Andre Iguodala won the MVP because his team was better. So now how I would never use that argument against LeBron. I say Jordan's the greatest, but I would defend LeBron and say we would never use the argument of him losing to the Warriors to diminish his legacy. But when we go into the regular season, it's mano y mano, the best against the best, the best 10 players all wanting to hold that trophy at the end of the year. And we saw LeBron. He took it personal because he didn't get the MVP. So if the best player in the world, like you said, who's been the best player for 10 years, was upset because he didn't win the MVP, I guess the award is rated at the right place. All right. Well, you know what, guys? Uh, We're going to let the people be the judge of who is the winner of the debate. Thank you guys for joining me here to have this. Falco, before I let you go, I know you weren't on the next debate, but let me get your quick thoughts on the Brady LeBron who's been more dominant in the sport. What do you think here? What do you think? No, hold on. Well, object, object, uh, objectively speaking, it's LeBron because it's basically just the nature of the sport. A one bet, one superstar in basketball just could impact a game more than Brady can in a football game. Brady plays one side of the ball out of three sides. Plays offense, does not play defense, does not play special teams. And don't kill me say, oh, special teams – uh, Adam Vinatieri kicked a few game-winning field goals in the Super Bowl for the Patriots, so don't give me that. Malcolm Butler bailed out the Patriots with a game-winning interception, so don't give me that either. One one superstar could just impact a game more than a quarterback. It is what it is. All right, Falco, thank you so much for joining. Can't me. argue with you. There. I All can't right, argue and uh, with you I'll there, see Brandon. you. And listen, no shenanigans on the small forward uh, Mount Rushmore. Okay, we know that's coming up. I know there's going to be a lot of pick picks that I may not like, but let's have a fair. Let's, let's keep it fair. There's no picking LeBron, 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 LeBron. I wasn't so, going to do that. All right. All right. I'll see you soon, man. Take care. Thanks Show him that LeBron tattoo. It. Show him that LeBron tattoo, Falco. <laughs> Show him that LeBron tattoo. You're watching the sports hit list. No problem, man. You're watching the sports hit list by the fans and for the fans. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Let me bring uh-oh. in the other uh-oh. contributors. Mike is on his way. We have Greg Polius in the building. Greg, you still celebrating your birthday or is, or, or is it over now? Can you hear me, sir? Job, can you hear me? I'm about to get real. Yeah. Greg, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. Are you still celebrating your birthday, or, or, or is that w- done? Nah, I'm trying to get some sleep now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
We're waiting on Mike, but this is the main event for today. Brady versus LeBron. Some of the other Hitlers contributed to saying the fix is in. Carl fixed this debate to, to, to boost up the NBA. But honestly, I really saw the debate on first take, and I said, you know what? Let me see what my contributors could do with this. Let me see if the NBA guys will take on it. Um, let's start off with Coach, first of all. Coach, what are your thoughts here? Listen, it's two against one, so I'm going I'm to I'm give the floor right now to one of them. I don't got no backup right now. Nah, we not I'm doing that. <laughs> We're not, we not doing that. John <laughs> Wick style. Coach. <laughs> nah, Go ahead, listen, Coach. Um, this, this, is, this is my take on it. Uh, I, I, just, I just find it hard to believe, for me, first of all, two outstanding athletes. Uh, you're going 1A, 1B if you're making it as a selection. I'm not going to say – we, me, Ray, and, 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 and Greg are going to debate this to the, to the end, but I ain't going to finish this debate saying they're wrong and I'm, and I'm totally wrong. I'm going to take their opinion and go, and go take some, some, some gems from it to use in my next debate. But for me, I got to look at it like this. First of all, you got Tom Brady, excellent, but there's two sides on football. And I know they was waiting for that. I know guys are prepared for this argument, but it's two sides of football. There's so many games, so many Super Bowls where Brady played subpar and his team still won. They left with the ring. We could point out examples when he threw for 145, 45 yards. and still got an MVP, but his defense did the work. You could go to another Super Bowl where they only let the Rams score three. I think it was not the Rams, excuse me. Was it the Rams? They scored three, three points, 13 to three, Super Bowl 36. It was 13 to three. I believe 13 to three, Super Bowl 36, where the uh, Patriots won 13 points, 13 points. The defense won that championship. It wasn't Tom Brady. You know, he's great, but he doesn't play defense. And so many times his defense has been, his defensive numbers for the Patriots have been better than the offensive numbers. You can't say that for LeBron James. As he goes, they go. He has to be the best player. He always has to be on. If he has a bad game, they're definitely going to lose. There's no way he can rely. Yes, Kyrie Irving can hit a shot here or there, but you can't rely on the rest of the team. LeBron has to put astronomical numbers to win a championship. We just even saw it. Anthony Davis is a great player, but LeBron had to still be right there at that MVP caliber level for them to win. So, I mean, you can't give me a person who only plays one side of the ball, who only plays... He plays 16 to 19 games a year. Yes, he dominated, but LeBron has dominated the same way for 82 games in a regular season. You know, over uh, the playoffs is longer. He has to play more games. He's been a minutes leader for three of those seasons. You can't say Brady's the minutes leader because he doesn't play on both sides of the bat on both sides of the football. So, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just going to go with LeBron James. What he's done in the last 10 years is more dominant. You know, eight, he, he's won, he went to the championship eight straight times. Uh, he's won four championships. Brady has him on six. They both got the same um, Super Bowl MVPs. LeBron, has, he's been an all-star more than Brady's been a pro bowler. LeBron's been a first team, all-first team more than Brady's been all-first team. Uh, LeBron has, you know, the same amount of regular season MVPs as Brady. So uh, I, think, I think that's why I'm going with LeBron. Okay. Uh, the floor is yours, Greg or Ray, whoever wants to start first, please. Ray, Ray let me say something before I let you cook real quick. Uh, Mac, that Super Bowl you referenced – was the lowest scoring Super Bowl ever. So defense was played on both sides, but the Patriots don't win that Super Bowl without Tom Brady. Um, but was he so was he the was he the biggest force in that Super Bowl? Was uh he in, the MVP? Terms of, in terms of he was an MVP, it was Julian Edelman. Why? Because yeah. Because Tom Brady threw Julian Edelman open. He moved the ball down the field that allowed Julian Edelman to get those catches, to a accumulate those stats. Greg, I'm surprised as a pitcher, I'm surprised you're going with that because if you pitch the game a shutout and you only gave up one hit and zero runs, you think somebody who just hits a home run should win MVP over you going nine innings and pitching a shutout with no hits? I mean, if you're going to go that route, if I pitched a shutout yeah. and he he got the winning run, right? He got just the winning run. But you pitched nine innings of you that's went not to 27 how it works, batters. We you know that's not how it batters. works. We know that's not how it works. The guy who hits the home run is going to get the MVP. Chicks dig the long ball, bro. It don't make it right. Listen, listen, guys, listen, we're still waiting on that uh, that, that hit list challenge. I know this is what we kind of got a little bit of. I mean, COVID COVID got in the way of that. It it definitely did. Mike, Mike, welcome to the panel. Womack took one for your team and he went first. I'm going to give the floor to Jarvis and then we'll jump to you here. Jarvis, go ahead. How you cut me off, bro? Nah, he, we ain't finished with Greg. Oh, finish you didn't finish? Greg. I thought you no. said you had something to say before you let Jarvis cook. I'm sorry. I apologize, yeah. Greg. Go ahead. Hey, go ahead. Nah, well, Mac, Mac responded. Yeah. But uh, and to my last point, the NBA has more awards than NFL. So there's no first team 
or second team or third team all defense or all offense in, in the NFL. You have your MVP, you have your offensive player of the year, you have your rookie of the year, and you're all pros. That's what you have. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, too. Uh, to, to Max's point, shout out to you, coach, as always. Um, what we have to first establish here is we can't do the sport to sport comparison. We're not going to do that. The dynamics of football or basketball are, are day and night. So it's not, it's, it's not uh, worth the time. It's not worth the time to even get into that. We're talking about individual dominance. So if we want to talk about individual dominance, and no sport is one position weighed heavier than the quarterback position. You, you can't name it because in every other sport, there's other variables at play. NFL, especially the modern era NFL, everything is on the quarterback. The, the way the game is called, the way the coaches devise their game plans, the way the penalties are called, it falls on the quarterback. And the one quarterback who has done the best under these circumstances is Tom Brady. You know, LeBron James, as you said, hell of a talent, all-time great. But if, if we're just talking about one guy who did the most at his possession, at his position and did it the best, I have a hard time finding somebody else. You you can you could probably point out guys who had better stats. You could point out guys who probably set more records. When we're talking about being a quarterback, leading your team to victory, you could say in that Super Bowl a couple of years ago that the Rams, it was a 13 to 3 game. But let's be clear, they don't get to the Super Bowl without Tom Brady. They don't stay locked in and engaged to the game without Tom Brady. I just got and one they, question when you finish. Okay, I just got cool. one question. But when you when you go through the years of his experience, even even when they won their first Super Bowl and he was a game manager, his poise and, and his setup is the reason why they got through the Raiders and they got through the Steelers and they got through the greatest offense of all time, who had a pretty solid defense that year. Shout out to Drake Bly Corner. I remember that Rams defense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tom Brady has been a constant. No athlete in modern sports outside of Michael Jordan has been the constant that Tom Brady is. As much as LeBron James has done what he's done, he's not even a constant when it comes to winning, when it comes to Tom Brady. It's not even comparable. I, I got a question just to go back. Good points. I just want to touch on, you said that quarterback position. And, and we're not going to compare sports to sports, but this is going to, it's my, I might find a gray area. No pun intended. <laughs> I might find a gray area. <laughs> but, uh, but, don't try to butter me up, coach. And no, 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 no. <laughs> there, have been, there have been 10 instances in the NFL where a backup quarterback midseason has led his team to the NFL Super Bowl. Right. I can't remember except for one season where the best player in the NBA has been injured and his team has still went to the NBA Finals. Are you because talking about 1980 that, when Matt that's 1980. That's the yeah. only year, and that was during the series. So Kareem played that season. But that's what I mean by in a sport where there's five players and you have to play 40-plus minutes and you have to be on the court for a high percentage of the time, there is more value into what you do. Now, this might be the toughest debate because, like you said, right, it's so tough to debate those two different sports. What Brady does on offense has never been seen in terms of doing it and winning. Drew Brees has done have better numbers than Tom Brady, but Brady has right below him at second in almost every uh, category, but he's won six of those things. So I do give you credit to that, but I've never seen in the NBA a Michael Jordan get injured and leave. The Bulls, they lose to the Knicks, my Knicks. That's the first time we ever beat the Bulls and the players once Michael Jordan leaves. Right. Uh, right. When LeBron James gets injured last year with the Lakers, they don't even make the playoffs. You know, it's so many instances in the NBA where that doesn't happen. But, so for me, so let that's me, why I, let me just respond right to that. into my second point. Oh, okay, that's let me just respond. Let me just respond to Coach before you go. Before you go, Mike, to your point about injuries and backup quarterbacks, we we saw about a decade and some change ago. Sixteen and 0 team loses Tom Brady. They go eleven and five and miss the playoffs. What he meant to that team was shown from sixteen and 0. To no playoffs back to back years. So Tom Brady is the common denominator of dominance for the New England Patriots. Okay, Mike, Mike the floor is Mike your Okay, so I'm going to take my LeBron hater hat off. <laughs> I'm going to put my LeBron supporter hat on. <laughs> three, three points um, to, before, we, before we really get into it. Three points of why LeBron has dominated his sport more than Tom Brady. And Greg, you mentioned that the NFL has has the NBA has more um, awards, but the NFL does have an all-pro kind of list. 
So my first point is LeBron was an all pro for most of his career. Tom Brady only was an all pro three times. LeBron was 16 times. My second point, which Mac just hit on about the importance of a player. Again, not compare sport to sports. We'll just look at football. Uh, LeBron, so in football, Tom Brady and that Bill Belichick system, that defensive scheme, that helped him tremendously. He was helped by the greatest coach ever. And what's important to note about that is Belichick's defensive pedigree was before he got to the Patriots. We know with the Giants, and it's something I didn't know, but, you know, found it out that his actual defensive scheme in that Super Bowl was a defensive scheme. And Mac is a Giants fan. That mm -hmm. defensive scheme is in the Hall of Fame. I never even knew that was possible to put a scheme in the Hall of Fame. But his game plan against uh, the Bills, and that's a Super Bowl 20, I think, put him in the Hall of Fame. That is who Tom, ba Tom Brady was coached by his whole career, uh, except for this year. And my third and final point, and which ties into the first point, is LeBron has statistically, as well as everything else, been the best player of his era. Tom Brady, and some of you mentioned it, has not statistically and everything else been the best player of his era. You could easily argue that Peyton Manning was better in their prime, statistically, and Drew Brees was. You can argue that. But LeBron, there is nobody you can argue in his era is has been better than him. No one. <laughs> Mike, uh, Anthony said that uh, that hat has been dusty in the attic since 2010. <laughs> <laughs> I, brought it, I brought it back out just for this one. I brought it back out. Greg, go ahead. Mike, Do you have a rebuttal to Mike's points? Yeah, Mike, this is kind of where your LeBron hater hat kind of bites you because you saying that, you know, uh, in terms of him winning, right, or I'm sorry, the accolades, right? Sure. You have always said those accolades don't matter unless you win. I have never always more. said that. That is incorrect. What <laughs> I have always said was, is that you going to do this? You going to do this, Mike? Not, Look, I, I have to keep explaining this to people because they keep being confused by this. I have said for over a decade, Will Chamberlain is the greatest player ever. That means that's my premise. What I have always said about LeBron is the LeBron fans told me that he is the greatest ever, and they said it because of the championships. So I held him to that, that standard of what they said. My standard has always been the stats will outweigh, but the point is, in this discussion, we're talking about who dominated their sport. I, I get that, but I have, to, I have to counter what you're saying. And Wait, Say that again? I said I have to counter what you're saying, and what you're saying doesn't really jive with what you've said in the past. No, but see, this is the, this is the problem that you're making. What you're doing is you're trying to drag an argument from here and try to bring it into this one. You have to refute nah, the points if I you, just if you, you have to if refute you, the points I just made. Not well, Mike, you Mike, oh no, I plan to. Well, Mike, look, all I'm saying, all, all he's saying is, if you spent about a decade discrediting said awards, you cannot prop it up now when it's convenient. You are contradicting yourself. But what, I don't see, let me try this one more time. <laughs> yeah, you stuttering now. Come on, Mike. What up, let me, I'm gonna try this one more time because I've been trying to help the people, but this is what I'm here for. If I say as a standard, the stats are what matter the most when we talk about individuals. And right. if you're a fan of a player and you uh -huh. say that you're elevating that player because of that player's rings and that player says that, then I'm going to hold him to the standard. Uh, there it is. There it is. It's not the fan. Right. It's that the player says it. Go ahead, no. Greg, because I got, I got a free smoke for him. That, anyway. So ahead, that's Greg. the point. So the point is, but again, all I ask is that you address the, the I, comments I, I made, not address yeah. The may or may not hypocrisy. You got to address what I just said. I'm okay, gonna address okay, it. okay, so who, who wants to address it? Ray or Greg? Who wants to We're go both going to address it, but I'd like Greg to get his points off. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Ray. So just to the, a quick little, little spin move he tried right there, where he said that people, uh, fans said, and LeBron said, which is Same what he's really keying in on. But if we're going to get back to the numbers argument of it, right? Brady when it's all said and done, it's going to be one or two statistically at in every category. Okay. So LeBron. Um, 
So what okay. you? So what you? So what you? Touche. That's fair. But if we're going to talk about sheer dominance, right? Sheer dominance in his sport. Tom Brady dominated at, like, I'm going to piggyback off you, Ray, at the toughest position in the sport. So what you're then saying is, you know what? All this going back and forth made me lose my argument, Mike. All right, so I'm going to jump in. That's how you cook them. 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 This is why you have a teammate. That's how you cook them. He's tagging his teammate. Give me a... Got two. Got two. That's one out of the box, Max. You took one out. You got it. You got it, Ray. Go ahead, Ray. Come on. You took one out. You took one out. You took one out. You took one out. Yo, that's like yeah, how he just choked. He said, My brother, that's <laughs> the Richard one out. <laughs> Thank you. Mike Miller comes on here and decides to go back in time 29 years to reference a Super Bowl where a defensive game plan went into the Hall of Fame. That's right. all good and that's all good and well. Cool story, bro. But in the Patriots' history of winning championships, where was that defensive game plan when it was a shootout against the Carolina Panthers? Where was it at? Huh? Where was it at? When, when, when they played Seattle and they were on the ropes, who yeah. brought them back? Had Can to score 28 points. When, 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 when Seattle Can was doing whatever they wanted to do, whatever they wanted to do, where was that defensive game plan? Who brought them home? Tom can Brady. You? Mike, can you Mike, can you please stop talking so I can finish? I want to answer you. We, we, we're gonna go. You're you still talking. You asked me a question, bro. Bro, you're still. I'm still talking. We go to Atlanta. Mike, oh Mike, 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 Mike. Can you Mike, Mike, this Mike, back? I'm, I'm gonna get annoyed. Ask me a question, Mike, 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 Mike. Let him finish. Mike, just let him finish. Just let him finish. Mike, just let him finish. Come on, bro. Let him finish. Stop. Stop. Let him finish. You go to the Atlanta Super Bowl, twenty-eight to three. Where was that defensive game plan? Who brought them home? You look through the annals of the AFC playoffs. You want to talk about defensive game plans where the Patriots were in a high scoring games, trailing on the road at the crib. Who brought them home? Tom Brady. I don't want to hear about a 30 year old defensive game plan when there's too much evidence to the contrary that proves that offensively, when the Patriots needed a play, when the Patriots needed a drive, number 12, even in the Super Bowls they lost, and I've lamented this point countless times in the past. There's not one Super Bowl where a team can say we took Brady out the equation. Matter of fact, there's no playoff exit in NFL history involving Tom Brady where you got Tom Brady out of the way. Every team had to deal with Tom Brady. There was a late drive, there was a score, and either the opposing team with that defensive game plan gave up a score, or the situation came about where something happened, it was a See? fluky play, but each and every playoff exit that dealt with the Patriots you had to deal with number 12. Number 23 cannot say that. And a lot of times, LeBron, this dominant play I talk about, he laid down in the postseason. Number 12 in blue, you had to deal with you know, him. Sometimes... Point out one Patriots blowout loss in the playoffs when you didn't deal with Tom Brady. We could, we could talk about Boston in 08, LeBron laid down. We could talk about 2011 against Dallas, LeBron laid down. We could talk about 2007, there was moments in those playoffs. Not 2007, 2009, LeBron laid down. Come on now. What's 2010 too. I'll right. add that. <laughs> what, say that again, Carl. 2000. You ready? Mac, you ready? Oh, my bad. I mean, no. Yeah. Call, you, 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 you can, no talk, they, talk, tell me about a game plan. That's a full argument. I'd rather back. hear from Coach. At least Coach had a useful nah, nah. argument. <laughs> they went back to back. So, Mike, you want to? You say you have to answer for Java. Then I'll jump. Of course. In. They went. They went back to back. Where's so the defensive game plan at? Okay, so how many times uh, in those six championships were the Patriots top five in defense? How many times? Where was the defensive game plan? I asked you a simple question. I asked you a question. Don't answer my question. I asked you a question. Okay, he don't know. The answer is three. The answer is three. He don't know. The answer is three. Get out of here, Mike. You're definitely serious. Okay, so the answer is three. All right. It was so y'all asked me what. You don't even have to answer my question, right? You cut me off all those times to ask the question. Carl, get they don't know when here. I set the trap. They get out of here. They get out of here. I you walk in. I set the trap. Back takes I do research, it man. I do research. Okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Let's bring it back. Man. Okay, okay, okay. Talk to a Mac. Talk to a Mac. I got to talk to you. I set the trap, man. Look, I'm emotional. Look. Help your teammate out. I'm talking about Super Bowls. We're talking about rankings. I'm just going to go right here. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to go here. Super Bowl game. Okay, so let's Mike go. Because oh, he set a trap about I one game. I do this to him. I, I do this. Yo, Carl, you know I do this, baby. Games, you know and this. he talks about the regular season. You suck. Go ahead, Cole. I do this to him. 
Coach, I do it to him, man. Coach, go ahead, Mike, Mike. Look, he he gonna go cry. Oh my God! Oh my God! Guys, 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 time out on the field. Time out on the court. Time out on the field. Coach, go ahead, Coach. Coach, you had a point. Uh, I mean, Ray, Ray asked me a question, and I could find a couple of them, but just off the top of my head, I can't research it. But I mean, I remember Tom Brady getting destroyed by the Ravens defense in in I think like the two thousand. Playoffs. He mm-hmm. got. I mean, it's just oh, blit- it's worse than. Was wait, the, wait, 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 wait. Was wait, the Ray, game a wait, blowout, wait. coach? Coach, Ray, was the game Ray. a blowout? You hold on, it. hold on, Ray. That's Ray, what Ray. I said. They Ray, still Ray. had to deal okay, with well. So Ray, I'm sorry, so, 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 sorry, Ray. Right. Let, let when was Le- LeBron was losing close games in the playoffs? It's not like everybody routed LeBron every time he lost. Come on, That's a this guy was going into over. Not every time. Not every time. What? It's a lie. Not every every playoff loss. Oh, hey, Boston, he was averaging forty. Come on. Wait, hold on. Let me He's after 30 this. against Boston in 08. Tom Brady's performance against the Baltimore Ravens that season was worse in my comparison to what LeBron did against the Mavericks in that finals playoff. He had 154 yards, four turnovers. Four turnovers from a quarterback is like if I, – I, I can't even – it's four airborne free throws. You know what I mean? Like, like for Tom Brady. So, I mean, if we – and there's more. There's more. There's at least six or seven instances that I could find if I really – looked at it with Tom Brady he wet the bed too on in, in, in the playoffs that's gonna happen but yeah but let me get back. wet the bed but late in the game his team was in position to win because he made a play which was my point against the Giants when the Giants when the Giants won off the off the uh the head the head tap he had uh, just Brady, let his team down to score we were down yeah, 14 but didn't, 10, Brady bro. Have like, didn't he have like a, a minute and 13 to work some magic and, and what just, and what did he Going 90 Dude. yards with no timeouts under pressure? Yo, that's listen, not realistic, man. bro. That's playing against <laughs> what are we the, doing here? I'm not no friend, bro. I that's know what I'm talking back, about. No, that's come coming from back from the one and three, the three and one Warriors. You got to do some impossible stuff sometimes. That's crazy. LeBron James just had his that's back a good against example. the wall. That's and a good example. For that one, wait, wait, how wait, many wait, does wait, Brady wait. have, though? For that okay. one, how many does Brady have? You know when this argument? You know when this argument is going to be even better? And it, it, this argument, is, this debate is a little premature, but the people it's needed premature. it. It would have been better to have at the end of this season because mm. this is the first time we get to see Brady and you can't use the, oh, it's Belichick's defense. And right. what does do with Greg? Get him, Greg. No, get him, okay. Greg. He's, he's okay, going Greg right is back. Now, but you, yeah, this I'm is, back. I'm back. Listen, back. Listen, 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 Greg is tagging back in. Greg is back. Oh, man, yeah. use Google cool. Translate. Now he's good after Googling. Yeah. All <laughs> I, have, I have to Google yeah, nothing. Have Look, man. <laughs> Look, man. Paul's, Paul seen the video of my daughter up at 3.30 in the morning. Sometimes yeah, yeah. it happens. It's been a long I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. No. So, Greg. To Mike's point about Bill Belichick, right? People like to use this excuse when it comes to Tom Brady. Oh, well, he's a system quarterback. He's this and that. It, it, Brady wins because of Belichick. But then when you look at the quarterbacks who did who played in that same system, did not hit, have the same amount of success as Tom Brady. I mean, and then you look at the offense now with the same Belichick system under Cam Newton, and they are middle to behind the pack in offense. Because it's not just about the system, it's about who's under center. And that dominance under center is shown when other guys get in there and they can't necessarily duplicate what Tom Brady does. And those receivers that Tom Brady turns into, you know, all of a sudden, like Deion Branch. We ever heard from Deion Branch after Tom Brady? No. Because Tom Brady makes these guys into the Okay, from okay. okay. So you're so going to me. We so here from Mario Caldwell. So you know what? Okay, 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 okay. So guys, 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 time out. So Greg, look, Greg, you bring up a great question in terms of dominance. Dominance deals with making other players better, right? That's the same thing. So when you're looking at both players, um, do they both have lists of players that they've made better during the season that they played with them? Is that fair depends on what you oh. think better is? Yeah, What's better and also is? let me well, let me pour. Mike starts say, talk, talking about this. Mike, don't forget, you're the same person that has has argued that LeBron doesn't make players better. We just always, we just always, we cannot focus on the conversation. Yes, we, we just can. have to find yes, another conversation can. later. We can't yes, do it. We can. Y'all can't do it. So back, to my my back to my question. Back to my question about adults, making other children. players better. Like, Hypocrite. So, Part of Donald Trump. Yeah, go ahead, question. Coach. I want to answer your question. Go, go and, ahead. And, and this is why you got to be versed in both. I think everybody, you know, has a good idea of both sides. Um, this is a twofold answer because I've seen LeBron James. He makes the players better, but he's also played with the better players than Brady. If you look mm-hmm. at who LeBron has played with, he has had those teams in Miami where he's had the top players for Anthony Davis, and he went mm-hmm. to the championship and won. But he's also had the teams where he's had trash, 
I mean trash. I'm talking about like if I could have been on that first Cleveland Cavaliers team and spot up and hit some jump shots and played a little bit of token defense on mm. Tony Parker if I really wanted to. So, you know, I've never seen Brady take trash. Trash bags. Not trash. <laughs> Go, nah, nah, nah. Oh, nah, my trash. God. Yeah. No, not no, trash. no. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. <laughs> when he took trash. When does he have elite? Best, Outside of no, Randy elite, Moss. The best receiver Brady elite. ever had not was elite. a back end of his prime, Randy Moss. Everything no, not, else was these see, run of the mill, mid Greg, round to late round picks. See, Greg, I'm not, you gotta, you gotta miss, don't mistake me saying trash for a good player or above average player or an elite You're right. player. He hasn't You're had right. elite players. He, Brady has not had elite like LeBron. Has but again, elite, that's what, coach. That kind of proves our coach, point though. Coach, Jabbar Gaffney, Rishe Caldwell. Troy Brown. Who are these people? Danny Amendola. These guys are serviceable pros. And they won games with Tom Brady delivering the football. And the one time you gave him an elite wide receiver, they went 16 and 0 and set all kinds of records. Bro, like these Drew things happen. Gooden. And then, to the, and then to the point about defenses, we got to start talking about the minutia of football. How often when you have Brady under center, does a, does his defense have to deal with a crap offense or playing with short fields because the offense can't move the ball? One okay. hand washes the other. Tom Brady sets so many and tones that this great defense my, doesn't okay, have so to work nearly as listen, hard listen, as the typical great point, defense call. with a call. sorry he, offense. Right. Okay, so he, he proved my point, Carl. Listen, li- listen, box office, box office Travis you. has a Get good box good, office out of here. He's yeah. not even, he don't even have more picks. He don't even <laughs> got more picks right than me. No, box office has a question. Box he goes in him box office. Because that's his nickname. Who's, who's like, that? Oh, Travis, Travis McKay. Travis, Travis. He, he basically has a point to I your point, though, Ray. He basically says, simple point, how many Hall of Famers has Brady played with versus LeBron? Period. Period. I just said that though, but you can't Period. make a point call. You call. Don't don't start screaming somebody else's points no. that I already made. Yeah, just read the comments. I'm doing my job. I'm reading the comments. Too much, call. Oh, no, yeah. I'm reading the comments. Don't come for me. I'm reading the comments. I'm reading the comments as they come in. Listen, I'm reading the comments. Oh my God. Oh my God. Listen, don't turn this back on me. No, no, it's not how I do. Supposed to be with us. You supposed to be NBA all day. Listen, I'm reading the comments. That's what he said in the comments. I want you to see what happens. Stop sharing the comments. Good job, Carl. Great job. Carl, man. Carl, we put it in that. Carl, Stop it. Just, Go ahead. Carl, Go ahead, I'm Coach. I'm trying to ask. If I just said that, we don't need it from the comments because I literally just said that LeBron has played with the better players and his All Stars and his Miami team and his and his, doing, and his Lakers team. So, so why we don't need to say the sky's blue? We need you to say that. And you gonna call Tom Brady once more with less than LeBron James and dominated I, more? But but Max' point LeBron. is what you just said. What you just said. Both no, hands. You just said one hand wash the other. One Both wash hands the wash face. the face, baby. Yeah, yeah because LeBron somebody here hands. wanted to bring up defense, when in reality, the defense doesn't have to deal with the typical tropes of playing with a bad offense because they have a great quarterback or consistently controlling they, and field oh, position. Hit a Mac. Field position. Hit a Mac. Go one one Talk to a Mac. Can reverse it and say maybe Tom Brady has good field position because the defense plays so well that by the time they're punting the ball, they're putting Tom Brady at the 30 or 40 or sometimes the 45, a whole lot of possessions because of the defense. Hello. Pressure that the Patriots are putting on them. We Hello. can reverse those arguments. How often Hello. does Tom Brady defenses have to deal with sharing the field with a poor offense? They don't have to deal with that. The person over there saying "Hello," who does who has offered nothing to this debate, doesn't know what he's talking about. When you have a good to great offense, the defense can shine a little bit more because they don't have to deal with short fields, turnovers, and constant turnarounds. They get to rest. They, they get multiple opportunities with at least 60 yards of field in front of them. These are the things that a great quarterback allots solid defenses because not every New England defense was super elite. A lot of times they got schemed to be good or they just had long fields or they had a lead to play with by way of the offense, by way of the quarterback. Therefore, the quarterback dominated. Thank you. Good point. Okay, good guys, point. so uh, let's wrap up. Those are good points. Everybody, listen, let me give everybody their final takes on this opinion. Coach, your final thoughts. My final thoughts are going to start with the way I started it. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I, 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 the opinions given by Greg and Ray, good points. And any argument I try and learn, I got to be able to argue with them in order to argue against them. So they made good points that I would take on for the future. But to me, for someone, and, 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 I'm not, and, and I think we all play football 
like growing up. We all played football. Uh, 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 yeah. All right. Maybe not you. <laughs> Did you play any sports? <laughs> no. so all of us, all of us have played football, you know, in some terms in the street football or on a team or a high school. And all of us have played basketball, whether it was a team or high school, or just playing around. To me, it is tougher to be that one guy in on a basketball court and lead your team to a victory than per se when I was in high school. I played high school basketball varsity it was easier it was harder for me it was harder for me to lead a bunch of guys on my team to a championship state championship than when i played football and all i had to do was play free safety and punt return you know now ray gives a point to say the quarterback is different yes got you quarterback is the elite of the elite it's almost like a cy young winning pitcher my thing is though you get to rely on others sometimes to save you the burden is not always on you we're in basketball. If you are a superstar, if you're a LeBron, if you're a Michael, if you're a Keen, if you're a Kobe, if you're a Shaq, if you're a Larry Bird, if you're a Magic Johnson, it is all on you going into that fourth quarter with three minutes left. You have to make plays, whether it's on defense, you don't make every play, but you are involved in every second of the game. In football, you're not involved in every second of the game. So for LeBron to be involved in every second for the last 10 years and go to eight finals when uh, four championships and be at that elite level of MVP caliber, I think his performance stands above the rest in other sports. That's my opinion. Greg, final thoughts, man. So, uh, something that Mac just said, you know, in terms of like the position, what he did at that position, they both did things that were unprecedented, right? But as a quarterback, the offense goes as you go. If you don't play well as a quarterback, you can't win. So as the quarterback, you have to be the one to put your team in a position to win. And Brady has done that more than any other quarterback in NFL history. That And I know people like to bring up Belichick, so I'm just going to finish on that point about the defense, where Brady puts the team in a position to win way more than any other quarterback in that Belichick system has ever done. Okay, Mike, final thoughts here. Man, I mean, Mac finished so great, man. I don't even know how to close that. I mean, he, he made the points in that and degree of difficulty. It's, it's more to what a basketball player has to do in terms of controlling the game, controlling the tempo, leading in the locker room, having different different types of players. And, and, and a lot of times, especially in, that, in the conversation of coach, LeBron didn't have that. And people often talk about the fact that LeBron never had that Hall of Fame coach and what would his career have been like if he had someone like that. So you, you think about the level of, of responsibility LeBron has to have at, and, and perform at a high level. It's almost like LeBron sometimes has to be GM, coach, and, and the best player. But outside of that, it's just the degree of difficulty is so high for him, and like Max said, with football, there's two sides of the ball, three sides of the ball. You count special teams, so there's a lot of ways that. But again, I don't want to keep reiterating no points he made. He made phenomenal points, and so yeah, degree of difficulty, which is why I give the edge to LeBron and more dominant. Job, final thoughts. All right, so I'll just use an analogy. I was talking to Greg about this last night, and I'll share it with you guys with my final thoughts. You play a video game, right? The objective is when you put this video game on to beat the game, there's a final boss in that game. If you put it on its hardest level, the game is designed for you to lose more than you win. When I look at LeBron James, actually, yeah, lose more than you win. When I look at LeBron James, right, he's a final boss. You, you're going to win some, but you're going to lose a lot. LeBron James has four, but he lost six. If we're talking about dominance, I know people hate to talk about finals record, but if we want to talk about dominance, you win four, you lose six, you're a final boss. When it comes to Tom Brady and winning and dominating, more often than not, Tom Brady is a dead end. When you run into the Patriots, you're not going through that wall. You're not going through that. You're not going around the wall. You're crashing into that wall. And when it all when, it, when it's all on the line, the defense has schemed their way through the game. The offense has made plays. When 12 has the ball and the game is on the line, we've saw it for nearly 20 years. You can't do anything with him. If that's not dominating over nearly two decades, I don't know what is. I've lost count on the amount of times he had the ball and you knew what he was going to do. Even in that Rams Super Bowl, to bring a full circle back to coach. At a certain point in that fourth quarter, everybody around America, around the world knew the Patriots were going to drive and the Patriots were going to score. We, we talk about the Super Bowl, he lost to the Giants. 
The defense dominated that game. But at a certain point, Brady got the ball. It went nearly 80 yards. Morse caught the touchdown. Brady can't play defense, but he did his part. He did his part. Every Super Bowl, every playoff game, even when he played poorly, when they needed a drive, he did his part. When he went to Denver and they got eliminated, he still found Gronk late in the game to, to nearly win that game. I could point out decades of moments. Tom Brady dominates more than anyone else in sports right now. Keep your stats. Keep all those narratives. Win or lose, it's Tom Brady. All right, Coach, you had one final point before we go? I want to address the guy in the chat, Mr. Box Office, man. Oh, listen, no. <laughs> listen, brother. <laughs> listen, I understand you want to stick up for football, but a player like you could only play one side. So you want to understand what we're talking about here. This is called when you can get on both sides. And Ooh. also, until you pass me and give me your picks more than me, somebody Ooh. who just watches Spicy. football for fun, I'm ahead, Carl, right? Am I ahead three, three, three picks? And I just three picks, 36, I, 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 33, yeah. I'm just doing this, throwing it up in there. You studying books, Athlon, <laughs> Talk to him, Mac. watching Sunday night shows <laughs> and all that. You can't yeah, pick I'll, I'll try to catch the strays on the debate. Damn. You can't pick Talk higher than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like Ray Ray. Jarvis said, I'm the final boss, baby. But Ray, I, I got a text from Falco. He said he would Venmo me $20 so he can roast Jarvis on his bad take. Jarvis is awful. So I think. Falco uh, wants to debate you about this topic one on one. I don't know what you have um, to say. I think you're gonna lose twenty dollars. <laughs> uh, real, real quick, I, I, I don't. I don't. I, I'm not gonna waste time with a fan who texted the executive producer to get on the air. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> there's, there's the big boy league, then there's bozos and banners in the background. Let's be clear. <laughs> who, who, who make jerseys to get on air? We, we ain't forget about Shots, the LeBron man. jersey you made, champ. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Oh, you talking 20, about the Canal 20, Street, Mike, okay. Mike, 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 listen. The hitless streets have been spicy, brother. If you ever want to laugh, you want to come back to the group, what just come back to the group. Listen, Greg, 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 listen, Mike, listen, listen. Henny Greg made a video. He was in his, like, in Brooklyn on the streets outside Ooh. taking shots. Henny Greg. Henny Greg. Greg, Greg, Greg oh, Henny, Henny Greg. Greg. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was basically taking shots at Marcus and Falco. It, it's been spicy in the Hitler Street. So again, if you want to come Mike, back and join that, come back to the group. <laughs> you come can back do to the... everything you do and be in the group, Mike. Come back to the group. Just on a limited basis, I'm telling you. You, you just want to re-entertain me, man. Maybe it sounds like it's spicy. I may need to call, come back. Call. Man. Can I say one thing, Carl? Go ahead, I Coach. Put this on the air because I, I wanted to leave this as a treat. I want to have a new segment. And, and it's no pun intended. It's called Smoke with Mac, where you get to challenge whoever you hate in the in the group to a five minute debate. Free smoke. <laughs> and I, free smoke with Mac. I like that. I like that. I like that. Once every week, you just free smoke. I'm gonna be in the middle. I'm gonna hold the mute button, and it's free smoke. For five <laughs> we'll work free on that. Smoke. We'll work on that, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Please make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Check out the uh, great area with Ray Jarvis. We have episode three of the Mount Rushmore coming soon. It's a uh, small forward. We know how that may go. I'm hearing some rumors about cer certain things. Mike, I know you're on the point guard one coming up soon too. I just want to make sure you do the right thing. And you know what I mean by that? Because I know <laughs> what, what you're you going mean? to. You wow. know what I mean. I know you know what I mean. No, no, you do the right thing. Do the right thing. You do the right thing. I don't know what you're saying. I don't I don't know what you're saying. I you're on point guard too, Mac. You're you're on that one too. Because there's a lot of there's a Listen, I'm gonna say, there's a lot of rumors I'm hearing LeBron may make the point guard list. Greg dropped a video about that today, kind of sneaking. Oh, there's a lot of rumors. Oh, Go no ahead. spoilers, no, I don't bro. Spoilers. <laughs> just letting you know there are rumors. I didn't give any spoilers. I, just said, listen, I didn't spoil anything. I just said rumors. That's all I said. I just said rumors. Ah. Yo, just listen, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do with that debate. No, do the wait. right thing. Do the right thing, I'm, Mike. I don't know what that means, Carl. I'm going to just do, do know what that means. Do the right thing. Bob Cowsey's not going to make the list, Carl. Uh, don't Bob Cowsey on the list. No, okay? no, no, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about <laughs> John, John Stockton should make the list. Do the right thing. Don't ask me nothing. Yes, he should be. Yeah, John Stockton needs to make that list. That's what I mean by do the right thing. I'm not telling nobody nothing. I'm not telling nobody nothing. You keep my list when we come in. I'm not telling you nothing. You guys take care. Listen, this is coming from the same yo, guy job. that gave Jermaine O'Neal an honorable mention. I can't take you seriously yo, with that. Yo, I can't take you with that. Yo, yo, I can't yo, take whatever. you with that. I'm yo, not it's true. You think Paul Pitts is the best player in the NBA of history? Of so course. Stop it. Why not, baby? You know the deal. You know the deal, baby. What? You know the deal. You know the deal. That's my GOAT. We know Look the deal. That's my GOAT. That's Look my GOAT you, all man. day. All day. All day, 100. All day. We know the deal. You guys take care. You guys take care. And we'll have a segment. Next week is Austin and The Rock, who's better. 
You guys can come in. It's an open segment. Everyone can come in and give their two minutes. Mike, it's a throwback for you. I know you like Austin and The Rock, so I know you got an opinion about that. You got just two minutes. That's all I'm asking. Just come in for two minutes, talk about Austin and The Rock, and anybody else can come into that segment. I'll talk you know to you I will soon. not be there. You will be there because you used to watch Austin and The Rock. Come on, nah, you used to watch I'm him a, too. I'm a, I'm a yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. I'm you guys take dude. care. I'll, I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Peace, bro. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network.